Three, two, one. There we go. Audio is working. Thank you. Okay. Trying out a bunch of things. Let's see what happens. All right. Hey, Craftsman. See, you've been streaming recently. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, he, he streams a lot of little, a lot of woodwork in there. Um, it's pretty interesting to see what, I, I think he's making a model building uh, recently. Okay. Why? Sorry, it's a new hot plate because the old one was completely submerged. Okay. It's still cooking glue though. All right. So, uh, Mecca, uh, oh, come on. there we go. There, we go. that should be out of the way. This is the little uh, hand vise from Lee Valley. I don't know what I'm going to use for it yet. Most likely, like detail carving or something. Oh, it's... <laughs> that's all right. I mean, hell, squaring up stuff like that's usually a pain in the ass. That's why, like. In actual buildings, nothing is actually square. Um, so, the, their their claim to fame with this guy is it's got these little screw holes. I could put screws down and lock it that way, and just use it like there. You can use it in your hand as a hand vise, like this, or the only thing, yeah. The only thing I, I disagree with them on, they said it's good for three, three quarter inch dog holes. No. Now what I'm thinking about doing is that we already got holes in here. I'm probably gonna make a small like wooden handle for it and make it good for three quarter inch dog holes because I don't know if I'm going to, you know, quick vice like that. I think I'd rather just shove it in and use it. Um, I'm very interested to see what I'll do with it, but I don't know yet. But I saw it and I was like, it's 10 bucks, why not? Um. <laughs> but also, and I think you already saw this, I, I, got a, uh, I got a set of basically tenon cutters. Um, I think this is just, I, I don't remember the actual names for them, but they're made Basically, this cones off the end of, uh, this will, yeah, I don't know what's wrong with them right now, because apparently even subscribers are getting ads. I would, I would complain directly to, I, I'm gonna, what? Five? Okay, one second. We're going to stop here. Five. The fuck? All right. Well, that means we need to figure out what's going on here. So that's, I don't understand what's going on here. Because A, uh, you should. Uh, one, Mecca shouldn't be getting any. Well, that's the thing is like Mecca. Yeah, like this is, this is wrong. Let's see, where is, it's in settings, I think. Where's it at? Yeah, no, I'm I'm going straight into Twitch for this because I, I want to know what the hell's going on here. All right, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Um,
Uh, yes, I did, but I'm not subscribed to you. Like, th that's the thing. Like, I can understand it if I subscribe to you, if, if I didn't subscribe to you, but... Um, but it shouldn't be doing it to someone who's subscribed, which Mecca is subscribed. So I'm confused as to why Mecca's getting ads. Yeah, I was going to put a handle on it because uh, it doesn't fit in the dog holes, like they said. I don't know if I fixed it. We're going to continue playing around with that off screen. But it shouldn't be showing Mecca ads, so that's why I'm confused as to why you got five ads in a row. I don't even know why you got five ads in a row. I don't like that stuff either. Like, I told it to do a 30-second ad at the most, or whatever, with that stupid new thing. But yeah, this is the thing. It says it's good for three-quarter-inch dog holes. It goes a little too deep, so I'm probably going to put a wooden handle on it and just make it where it, sh it jams itself. Um, for those who are in my uh, Discord, you know that I'm coming up on two years now for streams. And... Uh, Twitch doesn't like anyone at this point because, I mean, that's just dirty, dirty dealing. Um, so I'm going to be doing a giveaway for uh, Lee Nilsson, or not Lee Nilsson, Lee Valley. That's also a good idea there, Mecca. Um, yeah. And I'm also thinking about replacing the ears with just a speaker so that, like, people can here as well whenever I post it up on YouTube. Um, but I'm doing a giveaway for a Lee Valley glue pot, this little guy here, um, and a warmer to go with it. Uh, it's not the same warmer I use. I use this warmer. I, it's the warmer that comes with it if you buy it in a kit and it's a little like coffee cup sized one. It does heat it up to the right temperature, but I use this warmer because I have this pot. This will not fit on a, on a uh, coffee cup warmer. Um, so I have the big warmer as well. Right now, this is just here to hold my brush. Get this out of the way, because today we're going to make a custom sticking board, or we're going to try. So I'm just getting the glue ready because hide glue uh, has a very big advantage over PVA when you're doing something like a jig. Um, so onward and upward look at all this wood disregard that there are stickers all over this wood yes i did buy pre-cut poplar shame me if you will but i thought it would be easier and faster to just buy poplar in the dimensions needed and glue glue and screw them together um we will do Yeah, but I'm not sure how, uh, I guess the easy way to put it is how powerful the computer is. If I do that, will it slow down the stream upload, blah, 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 things like that. Um, but it's possible I could do that. Okay, so, so the basic idea is we're going to have three tiers because we're going to make a special board for this molding that has a back rabbit. So we're going to have three tiers. Um, and what's basically going to happen is Wes is going to realize that he doesn't have three tiers. Yeah. <laughs> because I was going to have like a tier to just do stuff and then a tier with the back rabbit in place so that I could do that. And then I was going to have a tier where the back rabbit was 
out here. I didn't do it. Um, although I could. Oh, I only got one of these. I didn't actually buy two. Never mind. If I really, really needed to, I guess I could. Put this on the back. But would that be tall enough? In theory, yes. In theory, yes. Lo and behold, I've come up with a backwards plan. Yeah, I was about to say it's yeah, and I don't want to spend hours dimensioning lumber for something like this. I just want to glue, screw, and get it done and show you guys how to make like a custom sticking board, not sticking board extreme, <laughs> you know. Here's just a normal... Ooh, wait, wait, wait. Although I know this is glued on, so it's not, not any chance of that ever happening. So basic sticking board gets to continue to be... Yep, yep, yep. All right, this is my block to base off that. So, easy way to figure this out. How are we doing glue-wise, guys? Oh, looks like we're getting liquidy. But yeah, in, uh, November 15th is my stream anniversary, but that is during the week. Um, so I'm probably going to do it either the Sunday before or after. I'm going to come up with details for the giveaway for the Lee Nielsen pot and warmer. Not this one, but because this one is mine. I've had it for, what, like two years now. Um, oh, yeah, I did. I actually used it a little while ago. The name stamp was in the toolbox. It's right here. Actually, I think what I did was I pulled that. No, this had to get washed too because it went through it. Um, so yeah, it stayed in the pocket and I just like emptied the pockets after the flood. All right, let's get the glue and stain bucket out of the way. Uh, I'll see if I can find the guy who made mine. Um, it's just a guy who makes them. He made Chris Schwartz's. I'm pretty sure he made MS Bickford's. Okay. Gonna need you. Next question. Did I open my... I didn't. All right. We'll fix that in a second. By fix, I mean there they are. We're going to have a whole set plus. But I'm keeping this piece of paper. <laughs> if I ever have to look for it again, I know what the set number is so I can look for it. Also, Mecca, uh, I don't know if you saw it, but I... Uh, actually, pull these out, put these in. That's what I thought. Oh, give me a second. I'll fix her. Come on, Obspot. Let me. I'll get it locked because it probably doesn't need to be following me much anymore. Uh, right about there's. Come on, follow me down. Fine. Jeez. Got 
Very interesting. Oops. Get you out. Say hello. We're gonna put these in one of my part bins. They're still good, I just need to clean the rust off of them, but also it's good to have a few replacements, but I want a full set in the handle, if you get what I'm saying. That way I don't have to look around. There's a whole set in the handle, I know there's a whole set. I've replaced the ones I broke. Took a while. All right. We're going to use you as well. And we're going to use one of you. Let's see, which one do we want? It doesn't really matter. You know what? I was thinking about this. I have two. We're going to dedicate one to being, it's going to have a dedicated bit in it. And it makes sense to do this, actually. Ah, yeah. That's typically what it is. Okay, we're gonna... This brace is now my dedicated countersink. No more looking for no more setting up something. We have a dedicated countersink. So now we have a drill, we have a screwdriver, and we have a countersink. All right. One thing we don't have That would be awesome. You probably will not make a killing, but I mean, I guarantee you people would be looking for them. All right, plus screws. Uh, what are these little itty bitty ones for? That uh, stops along the bottom. All right. This is where things get fun. Okay, so basically the idea is we're gonna have the bottom level, we're gonna have a mid level. Let me get these out of the way. You don't need these in front. Oh, well, thank you. Obspot for not following the instructions. And then we're going to have a top level here. And this is really just to get things going. So in each level, we are going to basically have a different operation. We're going to have a level that is molding without a rabbit, molding with the rabbit in the back, and molding with the rabbit in the front so that it holds it secure and you don't have to worry about anything. Before I start making, I'm going to lose these screws so fast. Okay, before I start doing anything, do we, I'm going to glorify myself with, okay, we're getting these out and out of the way before I lose them. We're just going to glue everything down and glorify in what I like to call the usefulness of hide glue. Rub joints. I don't need a clamp. 
and it will stick real fast. I'm starting to second guess whether or not I wanted to use the Lee Valley one. Um, it's really good for things like doing a small thing. Uh, I thought this would be perfect for, you know, jig size uh, gluing. And now I'm thinking about it going, I'm probably still going to need more. I'm going to have to top off. I'm realizing it now. But the thing is, is I'm not looking for it. I'm looking for the glue to be the clamp, essentially, before I start screwing it all together. I'm not looking for the glue to be super permanent like the first one, which is done with uh, which was done with PVA, which you have to clamp it. And this the thing is, this is already sticking pretty damn good. This is what I mean. I could squeeze out a little more, but yeah, we should. Now that I'm looking at it. Ow! The sticks of poplar I'm going to use for my frame is going to knock my kneecap out. Okay. The good thing is, is like you, you notice I already picked it up by the loose piece on top. So do I really need clamps? No. No, I do not. What I'm doing though is if my rusty clamps will agree with me. Of course they will not. It's just getting enough pressure so that we can close the gap, which I think we're too late. Yep. Well, now that I have clamps, it's not like it's going to hurt that much. Oh, we're not too late. I'm just clamping in the wrong area, says the idiot. Really? We got plenty of time. It's just gripping. It won't set for a little bit. And that's actually why I want it is so that I can get it to all set together and then just launch a screw right through it. You know, have it sit the way I want it to. So that when I sink the screws in, the boards don't shift. Yep, we're going to have to make more glue, which means we'll start screwing this while the glue melts. And we'll get the rabbit plane out later. And this is how you know I need to make a new bench. I can shake it now. Okay.
You don't want this one. You do not want this bench. The only reason I need to make a new bench is because this one will fall apart soon. Not super soon, but, but soon enough that I'm actively looking into rebuilding it. I thought about just building the parts that, you know, that are bad at the moment, but then I thought about it. it's kind of a ship of Theseus problem where if I replace one part later on down the line, I'm going to be replacing more until I've just basically replaced the bench. So I'm just going to slowly work. There we go. Now, before we go too far, because we are almost out of glue, take that. I don't care if it sits in that pot. <sighs> I'm an idiot. The glue is over here. Okay, we're gonna stop banging my feet into this and we're gonna do that. <clears throat> Just get them way, way up here. So, and way back here so that I stop. But I mean, it, that's basically what this bench will turn into if I start repairing it. Um, because this leg assembly is rotting because I couldn't get the bench, the bench vise off at, in time. So it's starting to rot. Uh, the area where the depth, where the uh, planing stop is, is rotting because I couldn't get the planing stop out after the flood. I used to, I actually used to a long time ago. Um, I haven't recently, but I did enjoy it. It was pretty, pretty good. It's, you know, the smart man's comic. Okay. For those who want to know, BT and C, that's the brand I use. Uh, this is 251 cabinetry grade. I probably should be using uh, the veneer grade for what I'm doing. Go get some water on this. So I, what I do is just fill it with pellets and then fill it with water until it's right about even with the pellets. Or granules or crushings or whatever you want to call these. Um, but for those who are interested in entering that uh, giveaway for one of these brand new in the box with a heater, come in with it. This is cast stainless steel. Don't ask me how they cast stainless steel. I'm kind of up in the air with that. Like, how does that work? Um, we're just going to sit here and have this clamped until we are sure that the next batch of glue is ready. Um, we might even screw it here soon, but I kind of want to just build in layers so, like, because we need to sink one long screw there. But, but um, so it's cast stainless steel. I can at least attest to you this. I have dropped it on concrete and it has been through a flood. There's no cracks, no breaks, no rust. What you're seeing right there is probably a little bit of dirt because I, I've washed it a couple times, but I didn't look at it very, it, it, it's a glue pot. It doesn't need to be pretty. Um, it's durable. I like it. The only thing that's wrong with it right now is uh, the bale is a little bent out of shape because like I said, I dropped it. Um, this guy is a big cast iron one I found on YouTube, oh, not YouTube, eBay, I think. What was, no, I found this one actually in a, in a shop, in a uh, antique store around here, but I am paranoid about dropping that one because it is cast iron and very much going to be uh, breakable against concrete. You can ask any of my old saw vices, which broke against concrete.
because it's not ductile cast like Lee Nelson or like a bench plane, old bench planes. It's just cast. We got to wait for the, the glue to go, but like I said, we're going to be, oh, I guess we should bring out one more tool. We're going to need some sort of rabbit ear plane. Not sponsored by Lee Nelson, by the way. Dark and Stormy's, cheers. I need to come up with a with an emote that is not sponsored by with as many times as I end up saying it in trains. Although I kind of wish I waited on buying <laughs> the Lee Valley pot um, for the giveaway because it's like, what was it? A day after I bought it, Lee Valley actually approached me about, <laughs> about just buying it for me. And I was like, I already bought it. Don't worry. <laughs> That was like during uh Hey Kinetics, I haven't seen you in a while here. Or Benchcrafted? No. Uh this is uh Black Bear Forge. Um eventually I'm gonna have to break the piece of mahogany it's sitting in and get it out and and put it in its new piece. Because like I said, things are rotting on this bench. Thank you, Floods. Um, yeah, like I didn't know you could cast stainless steel. I, I thought it was like when I looked at it, I was like, how the hell do you do that? It's like I thought that was a forged thing or not a forged thing, but I mean, that's a metallurgical thing. So I don't know how you would cast it because I thought stuff would float off and out. but. Hey, if it's, if it's actually legit, cool. I, like I said, I can vouch for the fact that this stuff. Gotcha. Probably got too much glue in the pot this time, but that's not that big of a deal. I probably got too much water actually, because it's, but I mean, a little runny is not going to be that big of a deal to me. But it, but right now it's too running. Sorry guys, welcome to the stream. Watching glue melt. It's probably gonna take 10 minutes for this. I should have made the big pot. But this thing, like, if you've been on my streams before, I use this specific little pot for doing dovetails all the time because it's just the right amount to glue up some dovetails, get them together, and move on. Or to glue up some rabbit and, na uh, rabbit and nail joints and move on. Um, this is more I'm gluing up an entire carcass. Um, which is why, like, you know, I knew that, like, I could at least get some gluing done and then start and then clamp it to get it to fit together. Um, we may actually nail this or screw it now. Just to get it to bite because if I'm looking at this correctly, yeah. We'll get right down to it. How are you going to do? Yeah, it's not supposed to be that full, but it's still nice. I have actually asked them if they would think about doing a more typical size glue pot. I would love to see a cast stainless of that, of the old Mariettas, because these things are great. Oh, it's starting to thicken up, isn't it? Give it another stir, make sure the stuff on the bottom's going. We still got some we still got some granules in there, so let's give it a couple more seconds. But I do like this feature. 
this little lid feature to help it heat up and get, get to temperature faster. Um, actually, no. What I do It's possible, but I already have a cast iron Marietta, so I'm fine. I'm just saying, like, it would be awesome. But um, what I do is, at the end, I just pour it in these little uh, ball canning. Uh, there, where are these? Like, eight ounces, maybe? Six ounces? But these little ball ones, um, I just write hide glue on it, and I throw it in the fridge. Um, I didn't have any actually prepared today, so uh, or actually I had some in the fridge, but I had to throw it out because it actually finally started molding. Um, but basically, if I have some in the fridge, I'll pull a glob out, throw it in and let it heat up and maybe throw a little water on top of it in case it's needed. Oop, oop, oop. How do we know the glue's coming to strength? I can't open the lid anymore, Captain. Okay, so what we're going to do, take these off. And what this is going to really help do is when I'm putting the rabbit uh, blocks in. It's going to really help with the rabbit blocks. Because I can just glue and stick it down and then I can just run up plane or a chisel and scrape off the glue and we're done. Um, we're going to be smart about this and take the clamps off before I do it, which is not smart because I could have just used where they were. Oh no, I am all types of not here today, am I? Big boy. You shall do. Okay. Get you guys back in. And do something that is rarely seen on my stream. Using this with the with the rest of the bits inside and the handle back on. Can't tell you how many times I've just not even put the bits back in, just held down on the uh, threads. You're not in straight, are you? No, you're not. <clears throat> I'd appreciate it if you chucked in correctly. Thank you. Do -do -do. And for those wondering why I'm doing it backwards, I'm lefty. Try and do it without a clamp, that's what happens. <clears throat> Don't need heavy, heavy clamping, but... Sorry, I can hear the can hear a little glue overflow cooking itself on the plate. <clears throat> there we go. If you can, if you ever have these and you have double flute bits, don't do not pull them out with pliers. 
I may have done it in the past, but don't do that. You'll end up bending the shank. Always get them rechucked in and then just pull straight out. Um, because they're very hard to replace double flutes. Uh, and I may have to break that rule, but hey, pros, thank you for the uh, hydrate. How are you doing, by the way, Mr. Child? Oh, bratwurst. Awesome. <clears throat> I really need to open this head up and clean it out. I think there's a little rust on the jaws causing the slipping. Okay. Nice. Hey, cat. And this is why I did this. I now have my dedicated countersink brace. The other brace will be for drilling holes and boring, but this one will be literally always loaded with the countersink bit. So I don't ever have to think about undoing my braces now that, now that I have two. Uh, sticking board, uh, give me two seconds here. Let me just do this one real quick. All right, so. When you hand make molding, um, I'm just going to give you a good idea here. When you hand make molding, this is an actual sticking board here. This is like the basic of basic. It's basically a vertical fence, a horizontal fence, and stops at the end. And when you hand make molding, you throw your piece on, you got your screws for stops, and then you take your hollows and rounds so that you have a way to hold down, it stopped this way, it stopped down, and it stopped this way, so you can hold your uh, planes in whatever direction, it, and it holds the work steady so that you can build the different rabbits and fillets and curves for your, for your molding. Now with this one, we're building basically a custom sticking board. So we're gonna have, it's specifically for this molding, um, so what we're going to have is, you know, like one where we can just do, all right, let's cut the, this back rabbit here. It, it'll just be a bet regular one. You go up to a space. It'll have, let me just do it this way. It'll have another back here, but it'll have a, a ledge like that so that it'll fill in that back rabbit. So you have pressure and you don't accidentally break your molding. And then it'll have another space up here where I can flip it around and it'll be supported against a wall here, but it'll also have the back rabbit support here so I can lock it down and do detail on the back. So that's what I'm aiming to do. I didn't quite get this. That looks properly done. Do this one. We'll sink a couple screws in. And then we'll start gluing the next level on. Yes, Mecca, go ahead and make fun of me using uh, the God forbidden Phillips head screws. Also, uh, Mecca, if you're able to see me at the moment, I don't know if you're on the road or not today, um, and you're just stopping it. Uh, but 
I've got some shellac mixed up. Your dovetail guide is uh, clean, so it's ready for a quick shellacking. Hey, Payne, how you doing? We are making an advanced sticking board today. Where you at? thirst. All right. Now we do these two. Oh, wait. Yeah, these two, and then this will be the backboard. Okay. Uh, we had a Maine Coon growing up. Okay, this glue is definitely ready at this point. We will... But yeah, just so you know, Mecca, um... Hey, I didn't do a bot. I didn't do the bot. <laughs> That's just my... <laughs> well, uh, hell, you know what the bot is, Mecca. <laughs> it's the anti-hate raid bot. And so, like I said, we're... Oh, and Kat, you may want to know about this too. Um, you may want to know about this, Kat. Um, uh, but... Dream anniversary is coming up, Cat, and I have a giveaway I'm going to be doing. And it may actually interest you because I know you do guitars, but we are going to be doing a giveaway for a Lee Nelson glue pot here. Yes, I know it's small, it's not a Marietta, but for something like guitars, I think that might actually be good. Um, because it'll get you enough glue to start sticking stuff down with the hide glue. I know, um, was it Hank? Huh? Yeah. Did I say Lee Nelson again? Sorry, Lee Valley. Lee Valley. Jesus. Lee Valley is going to be so angry if they ever watch my streams now. <laughs> but yeah, it is a Lee Valley reproduction pot. Um, yeah, I'll... I'll go ahead and throw in and throw a, throw a bag of glue in it as well. Why not? I can get glue easy. I, I just pick it up from uh, Woodcraft. It's BT and C. Uh, this is the glue I use. How do you like them? <laughs> Mine is not the standard Danish cookie <laughs> tin. Uh, but it is, it is a cookie tin. I just saw it and I was like, yeah, when we're done eating those cookies, that's going to be my glue and finish tin. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next level. But. And now that I'm not gluing four inch wide boards, I'm not running out of glue. This is, okay. So yeah, we're going to be able to run off the two, uh, two pots of glue I made to, it's a one ounce pot, um, so two ounces of glue. That's why I rarely ever bring out the Marietta, because even though it's a one ounce pot, like, do you see how much I'm able to glue off of this pot? I'm not even halfway done with the second pot. Um, I just filled up the second, second pot when it was halfway down, so we've technically not even gone through an entire pot. But this is the thing that I love about hide glue is like, do you see me actually reaching for clamps? No. For that first one, yes, because I was trying to get an air, you know, a bend out. And it's still there, but I don't really have to worry about it. There's screws holding it in. But I mean, literally, I could do this. If you get what I'm saying. I just picked it up by something I just glued, what, 15 seconds ago? Can you do that with PVA? No. 
So, yeah, I'm going to be talking up hide glue because that's fun. Go get your coffee. Okay, now we're going to squeeze it out just because I want to get as much air out before I sink screws. But to be able to just line it up and not have to worry about when I clamp it down, it's not going to shift any because there's enough tack with hide glue that once you've let it sit for a couple seconds, it will be good. It's not going to shift, which I absolutely love because that's the one thing I really hated about PVA glue. It will shift and shift and shift. And this is more about just getting the pressure down a little bit of a bow here. So that it can set up without a gap. That's really all I'm doing right now. I'm not really clamping it because it needs the pressure. I just want to take out the gap. This uh, hot hide glue also is a gap filling style glue, so it's not really needed. as opposed to PVA, which will not fill any gap if it ever tries. Like I said, I'm just trying to get this done. Okay, there's our three tiers. I need to make a backboard for this tier because somebody wasn't smart and didn't think and need a fence there. Ah. So, guys, what do you think of this new uh, cam angle? I, I kind of like this. Having this uh, front that oh, why am I doing it this way? I really need to, now that I've got cameras set up the way I want it, I really need to put some voice commands in. Yes. Um, give me a second. This, it comes here. I will. As soon as I can get, okay, that works. I won't cam flip just yet because I'm right here. So hide glue, basically what they do is they boil, um, they boil leather and rawhide and get the collagen out and a couple other things. And it mixed with water, basically it, it's the glue. It's glue that has been around for centuries, millennia. Um, when you buy it like I buy it, it's in granules, but back in the day, you bought it as like, think, you know, uh, candle wax. You buy a log of it, you would buy just a log of it, cut it off, throw it in the pot, melt it down. So what you do is I, I mix it half and half. I, I throw this in and then I fill it up with water and let it uh, bring it up to, I think, is it 130? Maybe it's 130. I don't remember. There's a there's a temperature you bring it up to. If you get it too hot, it scalds and loses its strength, which is why this is set at one. Um, and the high. Oh Jesus! I came up here to do this and I didn't even do it. All right. Um, so. All right, where you live? Because I need more. I only had one cup today and I'm already on the rum. Do you think that's going to stop me? <laughs> um, so, also, when, with the, the, the giveaway I'm going to be doing, yes, I'm talking this up because it's only about a month away. Um, it will come with its own heating uh, element. It, it comes with a little green, like, cup si like coffee mug size warmer. All you have to do with that is turn it on and let it do its business. I have tested it. I had one at one time. Um, it will literally warm it up to right, almost the perfect, it's basically the perfect temperature. It takes forever to warm, but it warms it up to the perfect temperature. You don't even have to worry about it. Okay, let's see. Where is a chisel to clean all of this goopy goop off? I don't care about the back. The back can 
Uh, there's another. Yeah. Just so I don't have to deal with it getting on my plane. I mean, we're going to be planing this anyways, but. And then after, after the sticking board and build, building the sticker board, yes, I know that's confusing. Um, we're going to be using the sticker sticking board to build the framing molding for my sticker board so that I can uh, put all of the different maker stickers on a board and just like hang it up here and just have it, you know, where people can see, you know, if they've sent me a sticker, I'll have it up there. And including the one from James Wright. He sent me a sticker with his saw that will definitely be going up there. Um, I'm going to have to find a way to make Mecca a sticker because he's like, and nail because they are longtime supporters. I'll figure out something for you guys. Um, but I know I've got a lot of uh, Craftsman's Guild stickers and Mecca at some point in time, not this week, but some point in time soon. Uh, you're, I know it should have went out months ago, but your dovetail marker will be going out. Um, thank you for being patient and understanding because, you know, I didn't even have your address by the time everything flooded. Uh, okay, there we go. All right. And this is, this is the great thing. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. I'm still going to get it out to you because I, I got your address now. There's going to be some other goodies in there too, just, just so you know. I mean, you helped out a lot. There will be goodies in there for you. Stickers and the such. Um, I would ask if you would be so polite as to do an unboxing when I do send it out. Um, but you don't have to. because I want to see what your, your thoughts are when it actually gets there. And I, it is a little rough because it was in a flood, but I still want to see your, your reaction to the unboxing. Okay, so if you notice, we've got this. Now we need to plane this flat so that I can put this board right here. This one I might just screw right on. Hey, Yankee! Good to see you here. Good to see you here. All right, since this is only glued, let's go ahead and... Okay. We gotta make... We gotta make... Um, decisions here. Okay, the bottom is not going to have a rabbit support on it because um, how thin this board is. The rabbit supports are going to be top and, and second. Do I want the rabbit support in front or in the back on the top? Well, I know what. Okay, sorry, it doesn't, it doesn't read out, uh, oh, uh, not today. You missed the, the, the other two streams where I was making molding. Um, what we're doing today is making an advanced sticking board so that I don't have so much trouble making this molding. Basically, I, I had my basic sticking board and then I had this as back rabbit support. So what we're going to do here is this bottom one is going to be just generic stuff. And then this one, I think, is going to be back rabbit support. Although it might be better to have it up here. Yeah, front rabbit support might be better here. Or, or flipped rabbit support might be better down here. Because... It'll work. 
work. I think it'll work. And it would probably hold better because... Oh, thank you. Are we talking about uh, the little lower left-hand one? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think this will be front rabbit support and back rabbit support will be this one. Because then if I want to make wider moldings, I can, I can always just keep it on this one and we can, we can just you know, put a piece of wood down here temporarily. Actually, now that I think about it, the only thing we need for this portion would be to cut the rabbit. So, so this is actually probably better for the, except we, yeah, I would still have to, mm, no, no, yeah, we could. <laughs> and here's where all of my thinking goes out the window. Actually, yeah, this might be better to just be the rabbit. Yeah, the top one actually is probably better for the rabbit because then I don't have to worry too much about, oh, shit. Duh, that's why I, I'm, mmm. Hmm. Hmm. Because I need something to clamp down on. Hooray! Don't drink in woodwork, guys. I forgot about that part. That's why I can't do a triple tier. I did it wrong. Oops. I'm sorry, guys. I failed you. Although, honestly, for doing the front portion like this, I think cut the rabbit, put a back rabbit here. Yeah, dedicated back, ooh, dedicated back rabbit here. Am I seeing what I'm seeing, guys? Am I seeing what I'm seeing? Am I a genius and just don't know it? <laughs> One second here. We're going to do it the easy way. It's a piece of poplar. Am I seeing what I'm seeing here, guys? Okay, back rabbit. Front rabbit. Back rabbit and front rabbit. You know, once they're actually screwed in. I'm an accidental genius, guys. I am an accidental genius. <laughs> yes! <laughs> accidental genius. That makes things much easier now, because now I can just sink screws through here. We can make our rabbit supports, glue those down and be an accidental genius. Oh, was there long, was there, was there ads for you, Kat? I'm... See, now I don't even have to like care about flattening the back here. Let's just start screwing her down. All right, guys. Oh, I mean, I'm not sure how that hurt hurt you, but okay. <laughs> That's, yay. Thank you, Nail. That makes me happy. Okay, let's start sinking screw locations, and then we will start breaking out planes for the rabbit locations. Listen, listen. Look. Okay. Just kind of deathly scared about hitting the existing one. 
but yeah, uh, so. I wish. It does actually sound like a reel, though, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Haven't had this in a while where uh, the sawdust glues itself into the flutes because... With my exciting commentary, maybe? And I was kind of, I was kind of tickled pink here, guys. Uh, Matt Bickford actually contacted me. I mean, we've, we've been in contact. I'm not going to lie because I was in personal contact or email contact with him, talking about you know, well, what kind of what kind of molding plane should I start with, blah blah blah, and all that. But he followed up and said, hey, I've been looking at the profiles you're posting on Instagram. You're doing really good, but, you know, stuff like that. And I'm like, so I'm kind of tickled pink. That, oh, 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 before I do that, I'm an idiot. Countersink. Um, so I'm kind of tickled pink that he thinks I'm doing really good at it. Um, And uh, he also said, you know, just, you know, in the future, if I've got any questions, feel free to call, call, contact him. I've actually been on the phone with him once because. Because I had some questions already, but I mean, like, he also confirmed some suspicions I had about planes that I want to buy uh, in the future. Because I think what's going to end up happening and is I will eventually at some point own a quarter set of rounds and hollows. I'll eventually have a two, four, six, eight, and a ten. Um, or at least up to an eight. Um, and then rabbit and snipes and half rounds. I really do want to get snipes and half rounds because that'll allow me to do interesting shape uh, configurations that I cannot do right now, or I have to come up with fun ways to do it, like using a plow plane instead of a snipe. Oh, that is not countersunk enough. Come on. Use those muscles, Wes. I'm screwing as fast as I can. And also, like, I'm not promising anything, but say hello. at some point in time, there may be a collab between me and James Wright. Um, but probably at most, it's going to be more of a catch coffee and talk. Because uh, we're on two different style platforms. He is YouTube and I am Twitch. It's not that we can't do it, it's just... Kind of weird to cross over those. Although I would not mind showing up on one of his live streams. I gotta say, Mecca, after after you helped me get parts, the uh, the Yankee drill and the Yankee screwdriver are just so much fun. Like, not gonna lie, I tend to reach for the Yankees over my battery powered drill. And once again, go ahead and make fun of me for using Phillips. But it's, you know, it's whatever you can find. And in America, really all you can find are Phillips. It's 
Oh, I can make everyone cry if you want and, and show you the, uh, <laughs> the shelf of shame, as I'm calling it. I will say this, I no longer own a table saw. But that's flood related and personal opinion related because I didn't like that table saw. On... All right, no, no wall of shame for you guys then. I will say, even if you're a hand tool woodworker, one tool, one power tool, I would never give up. And this sounds weird because I've got bits and braces and all that. My drill press. I have a tabletop drill press. I'll never give that up. Um, it is too useful. Especially if you have to do something like, say, a cribbage board, where you got to do repetitive straight down cuts, the exact same depth at, over and over. I think it's like 170 of them. There is no reason to do that by hand, other than to brag. Okay, so the basic shape of the board is complete. Now, where you at? Where you at, little girl? There you are. Now we need to flatten these with a rabbit plane or a I can't believe you're cutting something the blade or a uh, there are different options but the rabbit plane is going to work the best for me loosen this up push her out make sure Not going to lie, um, I only own two block planes, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you I probably reach for the rabbiting block plane more than the real block plane, or the standard block plane. Because it helps with things like what I'm doing right now. Here's the other one. This is the, uh, the nine and a quarter. Honestly, nine and a, a Stanley nine and a quarter or a Stanley nine and a half. That will do everything you ever need, except for the rabbiting block plane. Here's the difference. The difference is in the mouths. The rabbiting doesn't have that steel portion on the mouth, so it can do exactly what I'm trying to do right now. Um, because I am not a god, I am evening out the... Uh, inconsistencies between the glue up boards here because at the end here it's about a 16th off so I am just getting my rabbit plane out because it doesn't have that little metal piece it'll go all the way down to here and I can just do this and it will nick off whichever side is proud you just Keep on going. I'm hoping you guys can see that from that angle, but I'm just going with whichever side allows me to do it easier. But basically, I'm just making the boards flush with each other. Although I could probably do this faster. Ooh. This way. Let me make sure. Yeah. yeah. Duh. 
Why am I doing it the hard way? Come here. Blup. I already have a way to anchor this down and I'm not paying attention to myself. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Oh no, oh no. This'll do. Yes, I don't know. I guess this will have to do. We'll just have to drill new holes. It's a, it's an old bench. Wait, what? Big fat ugly bug face <laughs> baby eating O'Brien. Hi. Okay, well, can't read the names. Oh yay! One Is day I'll get there. Well, uh, thank you for the follow there, Nazer. But yeah, all we're really doing here is... is making the out-of-plane faces planar with each other. And if you notice, it's only really taking from this top one because it's spun out a little bit here. Or it's just out of square. This top one's probably not as much of a problem here. It's only right there. Okay. This one. <laughs> what was it? Nail was always getting on to me for building jigs instead of furniture. And I'm just back to my old habits, aren't I, Nail? That's doing exactly what I was hoping it would do. Almost there. It's just this end that's out of square, really, and it's catching up. Almost there, maybe two, three more passes. There we go, okay, now back to this one. Okay, there we go. 
So these edges are cleaned up now, they're flat. This has already paid off for itself in spades. All right, and now, we need to make rabbit, or rabbit supports for this side. Question is, how thick is my rabbit support material? Oh, well, what do you know? I can just cut this a couple times. Okay, so, looks like we're gonna be uh, switching camera angles. And, oops. yeah, we'll still have to plane it down a little bit, but it's gonna work. Unless I wanna make the rabbits much shallower. I do have quarter inch stock. But considering quarter inch is about the thinnest you can get in plywood, it's not deep enough in my mind. So, I think what we're gonna do is cut this guy down into a couple lengths for rabbit supports. We're just gonna, now that I realize that this is gonna be a pain to cut. <laughs> it's gonna be a pain to cut. Someone actually did it. <laughs> All right. Hey, thank, thanks for the redeem game crusher. Let's actually do that because, you know, uh, these guys don't need to. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff on my, on my bench that does not need to be here. That's absolutely true. So let's get them out of here. So the clamps don't need to be here anymore because, well, all the gluing basically is done. Don't look, those who won't, don't want to see the wall of shame. With all the power tools that are pretty much as old as I am. But from what we learned last time, these I do need the. Get the sticking boards and moldings uh, out of the way here because we're going to need to use that saw bench here soon. Okay. What we have here is that we're going to put the sticks here so that I know what the heck I'm doing again. All right. 
so you need to have all this the uh, screwing equipment out now where was okay there we are marking gauge and this need to mark these out so that we can get them cut out. I need to make the two rabbit supports. Why are you even out? Put you over here for right now. That, that, it would be nice having a nice little dedicated multi-platform sticking board. probably will drill a couple three quarter inch holes for some dogs to for horizontal support okay that one has been cut or marked now we will mark this one because we want that nice flat reference side we'll mark thicknesses out later it's, like you said, a wee too thick. Time to cut these two strips off so I can have rabbit supports. This is going to be a painful, painful time, but ripping is best done on this bench. Are those... Is that raining pizza? Cat? No, I, I gotta know where you got that from. Come on. Sorry, this... Come on, mouse. There we go. Okay. we learned last time five ppi is too coarse for what we're doing for rabbit stops hey excellent chance you're ready to watch me be aggravated Ugh. actually i might actually just get Because this is way too small of wood for me to be playing around with on this kind of cut. But we will do it because we are awesome. It's going to be even worse.
anything, um, Mecca, I'm pretty sure me resharpening this saw fixed all of its problems. Because I am sawing pretty much straight as a needle. So I'm guessing, oh yeah, this is the one that like the teeth, I, I had to literally file this down because half the teeth weren't even uh, at the correct, oh, up. Oh, okay, that's what's going on. Yeah, I'm at the, half the teeth weren't even uh, jointed correctly. Get past the leg of the bench. In French? That's weird. Okay, so yeah, Twitch is just being an ass, I guess. Because like I said, you shouldn't even be getting ads in the first place, so I don't know what the hell's going on. these rabbits done and then get them squared and fully dimensioned and get them glued and screwed on and we'll be good. Come on. Like I said, the second one's going to be even more rough because we're running out of wood. Come on. And actually, let's see if we can do it this time since we didn't... Oh, Jesus. Okay. Oh, wow. Uh, never mind, I'm still a little bad at this. Come on. Glad you've been following for a while, uh, Game Crusher. Hope you find it, the content, enjoyable, even though I'm slower than dirt. For the follow danger thing. <laughs> Engaged. Okay, that's the first stick that we will have to finalize dimensions on. The second one's gonna drive me mad, I say. Mad! Yes, it looks. All right.
honestly, it might be faster to just plane the second one to shape at this point. Because of how thin this stock is. But we will see. We will see. Because I also am not trusting that I can actually hold this thing steady. Big fat ugly bug face baby eating O'Brien? That is quite a bit of follows. <clears throat> I mean, UFO pizza delivery? That's a great one, actually. Uh, thank you for the follow, UFO pizza delivery. That's a, that's a great name. Uh, okay. started flat let's hope I can not go insane say hello support. Oh no. There we go. Ah. Oh, there went my ear. Oh no. All right. It's back. Hold with hand. Yep, yep, it did. It definitely fell off. Okay, flip. Let's hope for the best. Nope, nope, nope. I'm going to learn not to do narrow stock on the saw bench. Until then, I'm going to suffer and curse. Yes, I do have power tools, but I tend to stay away from them. Oh, uh, red tick is a type of blue hound, uh, bloodhound. harder to do with the fact that like how narrow it is I have to be right next to this so it ends up sometimes hitting the middle support. <laughs> That's what I mean. Ugh. Come on. <laughs>
there's no room to clamp it even. That's the problem. It's like, I need to. Now, see, Mecca, you're putting words in your mouth. It's not all hand tool made. If you go back far enough, I definitely used a circular saw on a couple things and a power sander. But, yeah, 90% of what I've made has been all hand tools. But making the saw bench and the bench itself, that's, uh, they were, they were 90% hand tools. But ripping down stock, uh, I didn't have the skill at the moment. I would, oh no, if, I, I wouldn't have made the garage because uh, the garage flooded. Timber, timber is awesome. I was about to say, timber is a pretty good one to watch. Okay, where is my mallet? <sighs> yeah, timber new. I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, there we go. All right. Now we really do need to That's actually a good question. Do you? Uh, I would. I would like a pizza. Want to be trapped there. Let's see what we can do here. I didn't do it, I swear. Now we dimension. swipes. Ah, come on. <laughs> Been a while since I've done that. Okay, where is my piece to... Okay, cool.
Okay, now we need to reset up. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. this dimension. I mean, hell, it's not going to hurt to make it square. What size is it? Yeah, it's not going to hurt to make it square. In fact, it'll make the molding better because this was kind of just, I kind of slap dashed that support together. Come on, you can do it. I'm just gonna make it. All right, one second. I will definitely oblige you on that because I am starting to get the thirst. Just let me uh, mark this guy out. We're gonna make these 3 8 inch squares. Hip, hip, hip. And once I get the sticks down to the size they're needed, we can glue them in place and do the rest of the screws and we will be done. While this one is marked out, let's move it to the side. Instead of, let's mark out this, let's mark out that. <laughs> it's a ve it's a vessel. A nuclear vessel. Okay, so that way I can move the plane stop for both of them at the same time. And not waste effort on moving a plane stop and then moving it right back and then moving it back again. 
do all of the same planing together. And if you're wondering, I do actually prefer to use these old nail style markers over the circular cutters. I don't know why, they seem to work for me way better than the cutters do. Maybe it's because I'm just used to them, who knows. Soon we're going to have a sophisticated shooting board for small frames. Not for big frames, just small ones. Let's get this put back on here because we're almost done with the not playing with glue portion. We'll be back to gluing again here soon. I don't even know why I brought you out. Put the number six back. You just gotta make sure we're coming down even because this is a jack plane and it does have a cambered blade. But the secret is, this is narrow, narrow stock, so it doesn't matter. Get back in there. realize this we're going to be planing down to the same height there was no reason for me to be worried about because we're making a 3 8 inch square there's no point in me moving the planing stop we got Okay, next stick, this stick. Okay, good, good. Okay.
So, one second here, kinetics. I'll show you what I did to my. Uh... All right. So for plane stops. And I think Paul Sellers is the same way there. Oh, wait, he's got the shelf underneath. Never mind. I don't have a shelf underneath. So this is where I hit it to adjust it up. And then hit on top to adjust it down. If you don't have a shelf underneath it, put it on, put it on the outside face right there. Well, then that's exactly how I, I've been doing it, and it works fabulously. Um, make sure that you make your uh, that you make your mortise basically the exact same size you want a friction fit. Um, all right. So now that we're done with that, put you back. Wait, we've been using you a good bit. Always put a layer of wax or oil on the sole of your plane before you store them. Yes, I know like uh, Saki and Boyd, you know, had all these tips and tool trade, um, you know, like, oh, don't always retract your blade, always, sit, you know, set it on its side. Just put oil on the sole. That steel, like for me, I have a pine bench. That steel's going to just chunk into the pine. My toolbox is pine. Um, you get where I'm going with this. It's pine, pine, pine. It's a softwood. It's not going to hurt it. Okay. So now we're going to do this and see which. Okay. Now we're going to glue and actually clamp this one in. Yep, we do need clamps. I'm sorry, I lied to you guys. Yep. Let me stir this real quick so we can get to the liquidy part because it's starting to solidify. <laughs> Oh no, I grabbed a slightly longer clamp. Be gone, slightly longer clamp. If I had some squeezy clamps that were small, uh, big enough for it, I would use squeezies, but my squeezies are like for half inch wood. So we gotta use these guys. Actually, before I just discount and say the squeezies aren't gonna work, Yeah, they won't. <laughs> it ain't. Very true. Very true. It is. It ain't be easy being squeezy. All right. So now and like I said, this is the reason why I like Hide glue. Quick, easy, fixed in a second. Um, we're not going to put it on the board itself because that is a very, um, how you say, bad idea. We're going to put it on this. I'm just trying to do, decide which edge. Okay, so. You're in here, okay. Because uh, we want, I mean, there's gonna be squeeze out regardless, but I don't wanna just, like, you see how big my brush is, right? <laughs> there's gonna be squeeze out regardless, but I don't wanna paint the entire bed of what we've been building with glue and then have to clean it up. I'd rather clean up squeeze out than, um, then have to re-level the, the base, which, you know, I got S4S wood anyways. Okay, so now we put that in here, rub it down a little, squeeze here, squeeze here. Hot glue to the rescue. Just 
continue to put pressure down here, there, and everywhere, and look, ooh, did I really need clamps? No. In fact, I probably don't need them at all. It's holding pretty well. Probably just need to clean up the sides again, as is tradition. But you know, a rabbit plane will fix that. So this is the rabbit support, the back rabbit support, and we're gonna do a front rabbit support real, real soon. We're gonna do it a very ingeniously stupid way, but we're gonna do it. And this is what I mean by like, I, you see I'm not using clamps. And I may sink a screw in there, but I may not actually. Just because like running my finger with, you know, firm pressure down here to squeeze the glue a little bit while it's drying seems to have done its job. There's a little bit here that I don't trust. is, can I sink a screw in here without splitting it? Probably not. That's the thing I'm worried about is I don't think I can sink a screw on this without splitting it. Now how are we going to line this up? We do this. And then we grab this. Hey, look at that. We got a line to follow for our glue. Because God forbid we try to do anything correctly. But that is where our edge needs to line up for the front rabbit support. This one actually is going to be a little... Actually... Actually... Hey! Look at that! Which... Uh, which uh, Yeah, would you look at that? That yeah, right there. And all I'd have to do is hold it down. Because it'll be a spring joint because of that. <laughs> One second before I do that, before I get overconfident. Actually, before I get overconfident at all, don't glue that up. Where's my rabbit plane? We need to clean this up. Before for before we glue anything. And we need to set the rabbit plane back a bit because this is a little heavy set from earlier. So loosen her up. Get this thing just taking scrapes because we're just trying to peel glue. Realize that the blade is not sitting correctly and go, hmm, that worries me, but too late now. And what we're doing is taking just a thin shaving to get the glue off. And what we're doing now is putting right here, so that I don't go inside I'm trying to do this. I know some people are probably looking at me going, you're using a Lee Nielsen plane to scrape glue. What kind of travesty are you? And the answer is a really screwball kind.
But I mean, you can either do it with a chisel or you could do it with a plane and a rabbit plane will work. Where's that brush? Brush, brush, brush. Make sure we've got it actually clean and I'm not just doing this for no reason. Absolutely no reason. Rabbit support's good. Hold this, go. Is this the way we were gonna do it? This is the way we were gonna do it. Flip, flip. Blue, blue, blue. Once again, I will be doing a giveaway sometime in November for uh, a Lee Nielsen glue pot and warmer. And since Kat asked, possibly a pouch of glue as well. To go with it, that way you actually have glue with your glue pot. And you don't just have a relic. That will be coming up during my stream anniversary. I will be releasing giveaway details in a little while. Um, I'm working out how to do the uh, giveaway uh, because I no longer use stream. Uh, can't even remember what the hell it's called anymore. One, one of the streaming uh, aid services, not, not stream elements. I think it was the other one. Or the hell that one was called. But I have found a way to get it to uh, line up. Yeah, this one will definitely have to be cleaned up with a chisel, so we'll get the ch Oh no, come on. <laughs> hey, Hans, uh, glad to see you're here. Don't worry, man. Don't get in trouble. Okay, we're gonna have to do this one with a clamp just to make sure we get good bondage. Because this one is wanting to let go. No, no! Oh, well that's awesome. That's the downside of hot glue. We may just have to screw these in. Or, try it again. <laughs> Probably just didn't have enough hot glue. Also, we can do this. When in doubt, just paste it on. And I will just clean out the levels in a second. It's going to get harder and harder to use this glue, though, when it gets cold, because this is an unconditioned garage. Oh no, we've got spider webs everywhere. But glad to see you're here, Hansa. Don't worry about too much. Oh, okay, there we go. Ooh, the glue is definitely gripping now. Uh, okay. First things first, get you down here. It, it, it. Ah, 
fine. We just hold it down. And actually, I think that layer of glue did exactly what I was hoping it would do. Fixed the problem completely because now it's not coming off. I think I just didn't have enough glue the first time, guys. Because now it's not pulling off at all. The other thing is, is cleaning up after hot glue, it, hot hide glue is stupid easy because unlike PVA, which stays liquid forever, this stuff sets in a gel form like five minutes after you're, not even five minutes, but stupid fast. So like I'm looking at it going, okay, we can chisel off the extra and we're done. And if you notice what I'm doing right now is I'm just running a fingernail over like blobs and just pulling it off. <laughs> yes, glue to the Maximus. <clears throat> okay. So at this point, we have the basics of the board built, except we don't have stopping screws. We don't have horizontal stops. So what we're going to do is run a chisel down this. I get a three quarter, three quarter is probably the best size for this. Let's see if we can get the glue out of it first. Just the overspill, guys. Nothing big. Just want this portion to be clean. For those wondering, in my tool chest where I had like the uh, the plane uh, dividers, this is literally all I did. I just took a piece of wood and glued it down with hot glue. Hot hide glue, I should say. I gotta keep remembering to say hot hide glue because hot glue is a completely different beast and I don't actually like hot glue, you know, hot glue guns and stuff like that. There we go. Okay. So now, now that we got our shoots made, our, our rabbit supports made, let us start making let us make sure, okay, this one's okay. Do here, here, okay. Where is my molding? So that I know how this is gonna work. I guess really regardless of what we're doing. Yeah, just one in the center. Okay. Let's start making my depth, my uh, planing stops on these boards. We're gonna have to switch out the bits on this when we get down here because it's a different. It's a a number six screw instead of a number eight screw. That's all right. 
that's all right. We're actually getting close to done here, guys. All right, so you get it. Honestly, there's no reason why not to just do long screws. All right, do, 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 countersink. 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 It's time to countersink. That's deep enough countersink. Let's go to this one. Countersink. Countersink. I'm just glad we were able to make a specific, you know, like a customized sticking board. Okay, there must be a hard piece of wood there or something. Or I'm worried about hitting the glue pot. One of the three. There we go. All right. Yeah, this is, I'd rather have more shank the most shank possible for these screws. resist being pulled out. There we go. Then, because this is the part that I am not too enthused about, I should have grabbed another piece of board for this, but But you got to use half inch screws on the bottom here because I used itty bitty board. Okay. Picking out a screw, picking out a drill bit. Open it. All right, one, that's too big. There we go. Just right. Oh, and uh, just so you guys know, there is a 98% chance. Actually, that's that's too low. There's a 100% chance I'm going to drill a hole straight into the uh, bench top. There is a 100% chance of that happening. Even though I'm going to do this and go, okay, that, that's about it. I'm still going to go drill way further than I need to. I guarantee it. Like that. There you go. First hole. Straight into the straight into the board. Yep, there we go again. I'm never really good with the super shallow ones. But I mean that I mean it does definitely tell you, hey, you made it all the way through because the board lifts. I do still want to sink some finish nails or something into these. Now look at all these holes I've drilled into this bench. Woo, I uh, care so much for my bench. Yep, yep, that's three. All right. Now we countersink, and we drive the screws in, and we have us a nice a 
little customized sticking board. How big are these screws? Where, where, where's my microphone's here? Yeah, a little bit bigger. Okay, countersink, countersink. Looks big enough. And why am I doing it on both sides? In case I have to go against the grain. I'd rather have a stop on either side and not have to worry about flipping things. Just raise the stops on that side and go that way. Sharpen this countersink, aren't I? Ooh. A little bit more on this. Two, three. Yeah, this thing is duller than dull. bit stored and drive some screws in and I learned last time do not use a Yankee to drive this small of a screw <laughs> or yet seriously I know you're in there Flathead, flathead. Did I put you in a different pocket? Uh oh. Uh oh, indeed. Okay, not in there. I know I put you in that pocket, so did I accidentally take you out and put you somewhere else? Great, I am short, short A screwdriver. But, uh, I've got like 10,000 screwdrivers, so it's not like it's the end of the world. In fact, this one might work. Just not comfortable using the stubby boy. Let's see. In fact, this one does work, so you, be, you are becoming an apron a screwdriver, I guess. Just uh, the uh, Yankees put too much torque on them and it's just easier for these little guys just to do it by hand because uh, you do not want the holes to strip out on these. You really do want the threads to be cut all the way down. So once they get flush, you just stop and go to the next one. Also, since you're going to be opening and closing these a lot, you also don't want the screws to strip out. Come on. Maybe I shouldn't stand 
below it, and I should actually just do it the right way, like such. Okay, these are there. Because these are just here to provide planing stops for the sticks of mold. These stubby screwdrivers, while they're uncomfortable, they're extraordinarily handy at times. Which is why I already had like flat heads in, in my pockets. So I guess the, uh, the Phillips is going to have to live there too. Nice! Awesome. Good to know. So Mecca, before you start up, check out what we've done because we are at the uh, finish line here. So yeah, we... If I could find a Stubby Robertson, that would be interestingly awesome. But we definitely now have a dedicated plane, uh, sticking board. In hell, this might just replace the sticking board I have because I can just use this part. And if I... I am too, because that means we can move on to building the frame now. Let's see. Let me see if I can clean this glue up. It's not that big of a deal, but I do want to get the globs off the inside where it's actually where it will actually matter if it's there. So let's see if I can do that real quick. Can't do it with a plane this time. But it's coming off. And that's that's the other thing. Like, this is how easy cleaning hot hide glue is. Is <laughs> just cut it off. I would not advise using a wet rag because you know uh, that will weaken the glue. It will possibly turn it back to a liquid. Um, downsides of hot hide glue are moisture and. Um, and heat. So heat and humidity can deactivate the glue, turn it into a liquid again, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because if you build furniture out of it and you ever have to repair it, heat and humidity, you can pop the joint apart. Not Well, Mecca? <laughs> That's a, that's a question for Mecca to answer. I have all my stubbies. There we go. We have a... We have actually made the more advanced sticking board for myself. So I can just plow the rabbits here. And then I have rabbit support for whatever else I'm doing. This is all for just basic, like, one by two uh, pieces of plop poplar. So we are, we're doing good. I'll probably have to build a new one if I want to make bigger profiles. But we have, we have a uh, sticking board that can be used for basic frames, basic small picture frames. And that was the goal. <laughs> that is not good, Mecca. All right, so. Jesus. Yeah, something's wrong with Twitch because, like I said, you shouldn't even be getting ads, Mecca. We will find out. Jesus, what the hell's going on? 
That's not good, guys. Okay, I am sorry. Yeah, I'm wondering what's going on with the ads because that shouldn't be happening to the people who are subbed. Okay, we're going to turn the hot plate off. We're going to make people disoriented with that camera. Then have any of the ads been like just sidebars? Because I noticed there's a lot of sidebar ads now that don't actually just like overtake the entire stream. Oh, well, that's not good, Mecca. Okay. We got to figure that out, what's going on, because... Uh, it might... It might, ad blocker might actually stop ads. Um, but that's, that's weird. Well, then again, you are in Canada, so half of Canada, no, nah, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> honestly, JFG, we are about to wrap up here. Um, we are actually about to wrap up JFG. Um, what we had done was build a sophisticated super sticking board. Let me see if I can find the other sticking board real quick. Oh yeah, okay. Um, before we head out, I can at least show you that. <laughs> That's all right. So this is my normal sticking board. It's literally a block of wood glued and screwed to a block of wood. Um, and then actually I'll, I'll get my phone so we can at least show you what it is before I figure out uh, raiding out. And it sounds like Mecca is getting everything fired up. So we're most likely raiding to Mecca. Um, do, do, do. There we go. Okay. so. So this is my normal sticking board. It's just, you know, a block of wood screwed to a block of wood with some screws in the back. So what we built today is a little more advanced, but the sticking board, basically, you just throw your piece of wood in there and you use hollows and rounds and just build your profile. Sorry for like the seasickness of how I'm showing this off. Um, this is what I'm calling an advanced sticking board. If you notice, there's multiple levels. And um, what we're trying to do is if you have something with a back rabbit in it, so like this here, sorry, the screen stopped showing what I'm seeing, so I'm like, doing it this way, where there's a back rabbit, like a picture frame. So here I can, one second here, I'll, 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 I'll greet you in a second here. Um, but so I can plow that back rabbit and then I can come up here. And then once I have that back rabbit in, I have this support here so I can just cut whatever I need at the moment and if I need to cut at this back portion, give me a second, I can flip it around and have a front support for that back rabbit, like that, and cut on this portion and that portion. All right. Well, hello there, Loki. Glad to see you're in here. Um, I hate to say this, but we are actually pretty much at the end of the stream. Um, we just got done and I'm getting hungry because it's a lunchtime for me. 
Uh, da, 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 da. Let me stop that again. Um, let's see. Is Mecca fully up and running yet? Let's find out. But, I mean, we are going to take you over to MechaForm. He's, he's one of my mods, but he's about to start streaming. Uh, just so you know, he, I mean, he does woodwork, but he doesn't stream it yet. He doesn't have that part of his shot fully set back up. Um, what Mecca has been doing is a lot of, uh, uh, detail metal work. He's been working a lot on a metal lathe. Uh, that's all right, Loki. Um, but yeah, if you, it, do you stream? We can, we can give you a shout out here before we, uh, move over. Screw it. We'll just do it anyway. Do, do, do. Nice. All right, so it looks like we just uh, gave you a shout out here. I, wow, that must be the new version. All right, so with that, I hate to leave you guys in a, uh, in a rush here, but let's go ahead and raid out to my buddy Mecca. Come on. And I will see you guys here in just Bitch, a short that while. Ugly -faced baby oh. eating <laughs> Hi. Thank you for the follow there, Loki. Thank you for the follow. <clears throat> and uh we will see you guys next time. Uh I typically stream uh Wednesday nights, uh seven central and uh Sunday mornings ten AM Central. Um See you guys next time. We'll start on that uh, picture frame and hopefully move on to bigger and better things. <laughs>